I was uh, speaking at a university a couple of days ago for Shinerama. Go on. Gan. Shinerama is a fundraiser that happens every year at universities across Canada. They raise money for cystic fibrosis. Are they still doing that now that Trikafta is a thing? Yes, sir, they are. Trikafta is a thing. There's still no cure. I could die tomorrow. Fucking uh, be sad about it. Hey, raise my, money. my dog might have pseudomonas. Really? Whoa, actually? Yeah. I have pseudomonas. Did you give my fucking dog pseudomonas? Maybe. No, I have cepatia. Ah, okay. But I did have pseudomonas one, at one point in my life. Interesting. Yeah, pseudomonas is a uh, bad for CF patients. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, <laughs> could I get it from him? I wonder, can, like, can dogs <sighs> give it to humans? Dude, I, I don't know. Wow, because uh, because she oh. said, my, I, Loki has an ear infection, and I brought him into the vet, and the vet was like, oh, it could be this bacteria. It could be like a good or better bacteria or a bad bacteria. She was like, do you have any friends with CF that were coughing into his ear hole? Because <laughs> I, I do do that. <laughs> and I said, I said, what's the bad bacteria? And she said, it's called pseudomonas. And I was like, I know the pseudomonas. And she was very surprised by that. Yeah. And uh, I was like, because I have a friend who has CF, and I, you know, it's bad for CF patients. Yeah. And she was just like, hmm. Well, <clears throat> interesting. Um, I will stay away from Loki for a bit. Um, but the reason I was saying that, A, number one, is um, if you have a university in your town, there is a chance here in Canada that you'll see some university students, first years, probably around right now, wearing orange shirts and asking for money. Just give me your fucking money, okay? Don't Secondly, ask any questions. <laughs> while I was speaking to those kids, I was telling them about CF. I was telling them some things about CF. Uh, to try to like uh, spread awareness to them of why, you know, why it's important to raise money for CF. And one of the things that I told them was that 98% of males with CF are born without a vast deference, doesn't form in utero, to which I... Uh, I Demonstrated? Uh, yeah, to which I showed them <laughs> that I don't have a vast deference. <laughs> I spread my asshole so wide. <laughs> they could see into my... No, I... Uh, I feel I, like you'd have to stretch your pee hole open. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it, some, it's all in there it's somewhere. It's in there, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, but I, 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 I basically compared that to being born with a, with a free vasectomy. And that was like kind of the joke. And <laughs> some people laughed. And That's a pretty good joke. It's good. Um, so, which leads me to the first story this week. Does, it, it's, a, d- it's a bed of vasectomy. Does does I just want to ask before you go into the story. Does like did it have like a did it have like a um like when you spoke there and you're like giving them a rah rah speech about like why yeah, yeah. they're doing it? Did it feel like um like did it feel like Herbalife or like Mary <laughs> Kay Arbon no. Arbon? Did it have dude, like a did it have like an MLM feel? Dude, no, dude. Speaking to university students, it's so easy like it is such an easy crowd to just fu- all you got to do is get up there and immediately just start talking like you don't give a fuck about anything and they immediately are like who the fuck is this guy speaking my language holy shit dude that's it you like your, what's your go to like oh, like how do you how do you get them on side right away like is there like a like are you like i do have i do have a go to straight up specifically no specifically for Laurier, okay. which yeah, is right. the university i spoke at yeah dead ass every year i go up and i go what up i'm bussin and they're like whoa this guy is so cool no Jeez, i uh, shit, <laughs> I the, you the first <laughs> I thought you were FR, no cap. <laughs> what up? I am bussin. All right, folks. How are we doing today? No, I um the first year I went and spoke there, uh the the guy that uh the guy that brought me out, um, I arrived to the to the gymnasium. There's like two thousand students, right? And I arrived and I was like, Hey, crazy, crazy week for you guys, orientation week. Like, how's it going? And he was like, Oh man, um honestly. On God. Uh, he was on God, <laughs> baby girl, last night. Uh he was like the there was they were burning mattresses on Ezra Street, and I guess Ezra Street is like the fucking street that just gets <laughs> shut down because they like have a fucking rager every night of a week. And I was like burning mattresses. He was like, yeah, it was crazy. Like police were called out, firefighters. It was like fucking nuts. And I was like, yo, that's wild. Uh, thanks for telling me. And then I get up on stage and I was like. What's up, everybody? Who was burning a fucking mattress last night? And everyone's like, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> they just go off. So every year, every year I get a call back to Laurier. The first thing I do is the person who who uh, who booked me to come out there is like the you know the the like student uh, you know student <laughs> events coordinator. I go, "Hey, uh, how's it going this year?" And they're like, "Oh, it's just good." And I was like, "What uh, what happened on Ezra Street last night? Any mattress burnings?" And they're like, "No, but I mean, there was a." Uh, you know, someone was like, um, they were crowd surfing a mattress and someone fell off, broke their leg. And I'm like, all right, cool. Thanks. Get up on stage. First thing I do is like, 
who broke their fucking legs surfing on a mattress last night? Everyone's just like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm Jeremy. I, kn- I know about the thing hey, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Jeremy and I'm bussing. Let's continue. <laughs> but yeah, it is fun though. I do love speaking to students. They get me jacked up. I got fucking jacked up. I'm still feeling jacked up. And uh, anyway, just All that to say, I said something about a vasectomy on stage, which leads me to my first story here. A urologist used an electric, an electric truck to power a vasectomy. An electric, oh, like a, like a, like the new Ford F-150 Lightning. Uh, because, I, I, uh, did you watch The Daily today? Listen uh, to The Daily today? No, I didn't. Why? Did they talk about that? They did, yeah. Um, it's, you know why? Because they have outlets in the front that you can plug into. So this makes sense. They, yeah, that's right. yeah, so that's it was the entire story. They it, plugged into the car. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was actually, car. it was actually a, a Rivian. Um, so uh, Dr. Christopher Yang pulled up to his office outside of Austin, Texas in his Rivian electric Dude, truck. This, this is, is annoying. This, this is article. the most fucking all tech that, hub. All that, fucking... I know this is, it's so funny. It's so funny. So, <laughs> so the power was out when he got there. He was like, oh, fuck power's out. You're all just in staff went about canceling the day's appointments, uh, including a vasectomy that a man had scheduled. Um, then one of, his co- one of his colleagues joked that they should use the electric truck to do the vas- vasectomy instead. In the parking lot. Now we all had, a, they all had a good laugh. Um, and, uh, uh, oh, motherfucker. I didn't prep any of the files here. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to put those up there. <laughs> what did I say there before I said that? I said, did I say they all had a good laugh? Yeah, yes, like you did. You said dead ass, no cap. <clears throat> uh, yeah, the uh, episode of The Daily today was all like... Uh, they were talking about like basically like the rise of the electric. It was all about California's... Oh, California's yeah. thing and Gas how, free by but how, by but how it was like about how California, how California used to be, California had so much leverage that like their environmental policy around like cars and transport would like force manufacturers to like adopt mm-hmm. things, but how that, how, and then how Tesla, Tesla came along and basically showed that you could get a bunch of people fucking stoked about electric cars. And now it's the opposite. Like the elect, like the automotive industry is now ahead of California on the direction of their companies. So like the automotive company companies are going, we're going <clears> to <throat> sell. We're going to, we're going to be ahead of California's target in terms of like right. our ability yeah. to sell all of our cars as electric. We're going to be doing that before 2035. Right. Um, so they joke they should use the electric truck to do the vasectomy instead. So they all have a good laugh, right? Uh, and the doctor said, I thought a little bit more about it, uh, he thought, and, and it definitely was something that was feasible. So Yang performed what he described in a tweet as what is likely the first Rivian-powered vasectomy, he told Motherboard. It was definitely not planned that day or even 10 minutes before. The tweet said specifically, uh, along with these photos, I performed what is the likely the world's first Rivian powered vasectomy today. Uh, power in clinic went out. Patient didn't want to reschedule because he already had time off. Electro cautery was normal. Procedure went great. Hashtag Rivian stories. Hashtag Rivian. Guys, uh, Rivians are fucking cool. They are cool. Uh, the first time I ever saw Rivians was uh, uh, they were featured in um, the long way up. Uh, oh, yeah, which yeah, yeah. was uh, oh. the third uh, installment of The Long uh-huh. Way Round with uh, Ewan McGregor. I saw a Rivian uh, around here not that long ago. Actually. Oh, really? I did, yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah. electric vehicle enthusiasts or boosters often talk up the versatility of having a giant battery on wheels. The argument is that EVs can be much more useful than gas cars because they can also be mobile power supplies. Uh, they can easily power tools at construction sites, serve as battery backups during blackouts, or even supplement the energy grid by acting as a home battery and plugged into ease uh, when plugged into e- when plugged in to ease demands on the grid during peak use times. Hmm. Rivian in particular has leaned into this with uh, an optional 30-piece kitchen set built into the truck. They can also serve as a temperature regulated emergency shelter during a storm while parked in a garage. Hmm. Something that would be extremely dangerous due to cars using gas. How annoying do you think it is to be around <laughs> Dr. Yang for like the next two weeks? Like it's, gonna it's gonna be all this motherfucker's going to be yeah. talking about. Dude, my electric truck? Because like, really sounds like that. He's been dude, talking to that's truck? what that's what that's he, what Dr. Like Yang that. sounds like yeah. since he got his Rivian. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I yeah, mean, <clears throat> hey, listen, electric vehicles are cool. They are cool. Electric vehicle, vehicle owners right now are like, like vegans. They exactly. Are. Yeah, that's what I was yeah, about to say. They're, they're like vegans. They don't shut the fuck yeah. up yeah. about it. How I do you know somebody one. owns an electric car? But they're annoying. They'll fucking tell you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Yang told Motherboard there wasn't much to it. He told the he told the patient the situation that the power was out and that they could either reschedule the appointment or uh, he said or we could do a really cool thing. Listen to this. I got this Rivian out front, right? We can use my Rivian. By the way, I can sit in that motherfucker parked in the garage when the power goes out and it's not that dangerous. So it's pretty much all like we we could do this right now. <laughs> um, uh, the guy said yes. Uh, so Yang ran an extension cord from the truck's outlet to the bed. Uh, uh, in the be- oh the, uh, 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 the truck's outlet in the bed of the truck to the Aaron 950, a high frequency uh, decisator that prevents mm. blood loss during yes. operations. Familiar. And a fan in the patient's room because it was hot. The power out in Austin. It's fucking annoying that they had to add that in. What else did you plug into the yeah. fucking truck? Uh, fan, I think. I think Everything else in the procedure is done with surgical tools that don't require any power. We actually saw what what it takes to get a vasectomy when Steve-O came to town, and we saw a video of his ball sack being cut open, and they pulled out a little thing, they snip it. Yeah. That was cool. Uh, but yeah, I guess, uh, I guess the something. procedure went great, and nothing went wrong. It all went to as planned. Um Cool. So congratulations to Dr. Yang. Congratulations to that man for uh, for getting a vasectomy. I'm sure it feels great. Yeah. Apologies to anybody who has to talk to Dr. Yang over the next couple oh, weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking annoying. You're going to hear this story a lot. Well, that's cool. I like electric cars. <clears throat> Me too. And I hope that uh, the day that I, well, I, I guess I already had my free vasectomy, so I can't do that. I was going to say the day I get my vasectomy, I get it done through a, a Rivian powered. I'll probably get a vasectomy someday. Dude, let's do it. Let's get a Tesla one going. A Tesla vasectomy? Yeah. To like rival Rivian? Yeah. Like as a marketing campaign? Totally, dude. Yes, 100%. Interesting. Dude, let's get a, te- let's get a Tesla brain transplant going. Dude, yes. Let's power that. Yeah. Um, I just watched the Apple event that happened uh, yesterday. Yeah. And they had... Did they, they were launch the 14? They did, yeah. Okay. And yeah. they were announcing the... Um, they started with the new Apple watches and they had this... Um, honestly, the production that goes into those events is so like just from a production standpoint it's pretty crazy so impressive dude it's, it's crazy. like a, um, it's a it's like the super bowl it is it's really well done yeah. and and you so, want to talk about the future i watched it on the plane i wait oh can you now wait dude, buying wi-fi on a plane oh, super yeah, easy yeah. not that expensive bought it watched the fucking thing on a plane did, so did you see the part when they they did this like they profiled when they were announcing the Apple watch, they profiled all those stories of like people who had been like sort of like their lives saved by the notifications that like either they'd been in like a cardiac arrest or like, no, I didn't see that. Dude, Apple had a major ad campaign about that feature. Wow. Yeah. I think they, they probably played clips from this, but like there was cool. like, you know, there's now this, um, and now in the new watches, there's like crash detection. So like, if I you're did in, see that your vehicles, yeah. you're in a, in a crash. Sorry, like, I saw that on the a, phone. They had gyro- they- Gyrometer and yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have a gyro. I have a. I have an inbuilt gyrometer in your pelvis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah me too. Yeah, I think ours are synced up. Actually, I think you're right. They at least have been yeah. <laughs> for moments in time. Hundred percent. Um, but yeah, Wait, is that to- a joke about like the way you guys dance? <laughs> I don't know, man. You're gonna have to decode that yourself. <laughs> Uh, but but yeah, so like it's it's really cool how tech like this is now yeah. because I was thinking like you know um, Maddie's grandmother's. Um, she lives at home on her own and she has like one of those necklaces where it's like linked to like emergency yeah. health services. So she can call like a paramedic if she falls or something like mm-hmm. that. And like those, th- that sort of technology will now just be built into the de- yeah. devices that we already yeah. own and wear. So yeah. um, even the new, the, like it's interesting from a health perspective, the way that like wearable tech is, is providing us with like this, these new sort of like metrics that are just operating in the background to be able to like help keep us healthy. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and that now they're monitoring like body temperature. There's, um, and this is a little bit weird too, but like getting into like cycle tracking for, for, um, people with vaginas and like, mm-hmm. and, and now like the data and questions around yep. data security around yep. that. It's really, really fascinating. Right? Well, cool, cool shit. Speaking of that kind of tech, um, this, uh, this next story, there was a post that, uh, came from Instagram. Uh, do you guys know Charlie Wyke? I could be no, pronouncing the last name wrong. I don't think so. Or uh, Wiki. Uh, he uh, he's a, f- a football player, soccer player. Uh, he had a cardiac arrest uh, on the on the field, uh, similar to Christian Erickson. Mm-hmm. Here's a video of Christian Erickson uh, actually 
collapsing on the field. So you can see him there. He's up in the top corner. And he just goes down. Boom. Dude, this happened. This, this happened. this happened yeah. to me. This happened in my, right. one of my games. But the guy died. Yeah, the that, guy died. In, yeah. in your game. Dude, now, this now, happened at the World Cup, did it, it not? Yeah. Erickson, uh, he survived. He, he ended up getting a defibrillator placed into his body. So uh, this guy, Charlie Wyke, also soccer player, also cardiac arrest, also on the field. Uh, last November, he got a, uh, a defibrillator put in. Now, dude, I've always a heard of defibrillators. Defibrillator or a pacemaker? Uh, no, a defibrillator in his heart. Oh, crazy. Yeah, so check this out. <clears throat> Whoa. He, I can't understand him. He's just doing he that saying? to show his abs. So he's saying that sends all the information back to the doctor. Is he speaking Danish? This, thing, this kicks in. When your heart stops, just shock straight in your heart. Normal beep, basically. So soft, he is strange to have. Doesn't look the best, but doesn't save your life. Interesting. Yeah, he's um, he's okay. speaking uh, Scottish, but uh, oh, yeah. Okay, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy, crazy right? that you can see it, dude. It's po- like so for folks that are just listening. On on the like just on the like just off his lat on his on his rib cage, there is what looks like someone took like George Costanza's wallet and just sewed it into his skin. Great reference. Like Sick it's reference, this big dude. old fucking puffy wallet under his skin. Way too many receipts. Honestly, if you're into like seeing guys um, with other shirts on, like you should go and watch on YouTube right now because I mean, very uh, very attractive man, uh, very yeah. solid body, handsome dude, solid with figure. some cool scars, cool shape to him. Yeah, cool shape. Yeah, he's got um, a great. But shape. But isn't that he's crazy? Cool so body. like, so if his heart stops, I guess uh, this thing just kind of goes. All right, time to defibrillate and like don't fucking touch him because he's gonna go clear. You know, does it is have a crazy? Does it have a built-in speaker too to like to like announce through his skin? Do yeah, not no. touch, touch Mister Way Wike Wiki. Do not know his last name properly. Do not touch him. What's the <laughs> difference between that and a pacemaker? I mean, like I thought, I thought that's what a pacemaker was, or maybe a pacemaker is for an irregular heart heartbeat. Helps make the pace. Hey, you know what? I know. I know someone knows the answer to this. Oh, you do? Yep. That can tell us in real time. Yep. Okay. Interesting. I'm, I mean, I fucking hope so. She's a goddamn CV ICU nurse. Oh, you're going to call her right now. Okay, yeah, right on. Let's see what happens here. Kira. Yeah. <clears throat> wow, phone a friend. She's not at work, is she? She's not going to pick up in the middle of a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> she is at work. <laughs> no, she ain't at work. She's fucking, she's probably taking donut for a poop. What the fuck, babe? Pick up your fucking phone, babe. <laughs> <laughs> babe, babe, this is one of the most uneventful. Wow, she's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell, tell her later. I'm gonna be. Could have been on the podcast. Could have been. Could have been on the podcast. You should here. call your mom, okay. dude. Just call your mom right my now. My mom anyway. knows. Dude, my mom call, knows. Call your mom anyway. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, my no, my mom's in. Um, my mom's in Portugal. Uh, she'll pick up. Uh, no, she won't. Um, uh, <laughs> so anyway, that that story, which I thought I thought was quite, quite interesting. And by the way, uh, letters at sickboypodcast.com. What's the fucking difference between a pacemaker and a defibrillator? I mean, you know what? You guys just continue talking. Google's going to tell us. Let's let somebody else tell us. And we can uh, drag out the content um, in a couple in for weeks okay. on end. <laughs> okay. Content machine here. Do you got any more twin content? Uh, I do. But, no, you uh, don't. I do, but it's next week. Yeah, it's coming up next week. Um, <laughs> hey, guys, the queen just died. Yeah, let's. we don't have to get into that. I know. I just felt like saying it. Because the queen it, died. It makes the show feel relevant. That's right. You know? Yep. Let's try to keep it evergreen. Um, a top 10 <laughs> dangerous sports. You guys ready for this? I bet you this will shock your mind. So this is, uh, this is coming. I was, from, I was right. It, a, a defib- a, 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 I really p- wanted you to fucking save it for next week. <laughs> pacemaker Dude, just can you just shut the fuck up? Keeps your heart rate regular. And we'll talk about it next week. Thank you. <laughs> keeps the pace. So uh, thanks to Stina for this one. Um, Stina, in our Discord, uh, you are tied for producer of the week. We have another producer of the week that's going to be uh, later in the episode. So top 10 dangerous sports. I think uh, this might surprise you guys. This is coming from a very legit w- website called t- uh, top10lists.org. Okay. <laughs> Seems like their whole <laughs> shtick is top 10 lists. They right. love a top 10 list. Uh, top 10 dangerous sports. Here we go. What do you think is number 10? Uh, uh, polo. So least dangerous. 
well, least. I, I mean, at least at least out of ten. <laughs> I'm talking yeah. about a uh, horse like polo, yeah. like uh, dude. I'd say that's fucking horse. very dangerous. I think uh, it's top least 10. dangerous. I'd say soccer. Okay, wrong, wrong. Rugby. Least. This is one of the most 10? brutal contact sports on the planet. Without any sort of protection, the players are really vicious in their tra- tackling. This is the reason why rugby has more injuries per player than any similar sport. In fact, the players are three times prone, three times more prone to get injured than anyone engaging in martial arts. Uh, Kira's wow, calling. That, that's a pretty fascinating. Here, let's just. Yeah. Hi. Hi. What's, what's the difference between a defibrillator that's like installed in someone's body and a pacemaker? A defibrillator shocks you if you have an arrest. Like if it stops yeah. and then, what is and a, then a, what? Pace, a pacemaker shocks you either atrially or ventric, ventricularly if you go into a bradycardic rhythm. Sure. Can you say that in English? <laughs> <laughs> like if you have a low heart rate, it'll pace you. So it'll shock either your atria or your ventricles, like the, depending on the part of your heart that needs help. Um, and then it'll put you at like a, a better rhythm, like a, at least 60 beats or something. Uh, love a good 60 beat rhythm. <laughs> and then a defibrillator. It's like if you have a cardiac arrest constantly, like some people will just go into like a, uh, yeah, like just like the, like whatever, like a little arrest. Your heart stops and it shocks you back into, okay. into motion. Well, got you. All right. <laughs> the guy um, that I was on the soccer field with who died could have used that. Right. He could have used the defibrillator. That's yeah. Right. Not the pacemaker. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks, baby. Okay. All right. Uh, talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Well, that was good color. That was. Um, yeah. Here's number nine. <laughs> cave diving. That is dangerous. Cave diving is very dangerous. I'm surprised that, I mean, it's probably because there's just far fewer <laughs> people doing it yeah. than playing rugby. You know what you're really going to be surprised at, Tay? Is number one. All right. Uh, cave diving, it'd be dangerous for a diver to get in the caves. Uh, um, the reason why is because, well, there's a fucking thousand reasons why, but uh, it's really silt e- is a big d- big yeah. problem. They can they can get lost and then they, they're they fucked. It's really easy to come, become disoriented with what's up and down. Yeah. Uh, over I know, f- over I know 500 people one. have lost their lives since 1960 due to cave diving in Mexico, Florida, Car- uh, the Caribbean uh, uh, alone, according to the mm. Texas-based San Marcos area recovery team. Um, I would say uh, uh, base jumping. Good guess. Not number eight, but we are on the list. Uh, number eight, cheerleading. Cheerleading is one of the most injury prone sports in the world. That, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, but it uh, seems for, like for women specifically. But but like like bad injuries. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, uh, cheerleaders are prone to injuries much more than uh, much. Uh, they, they get really they get really gender specific here. Uh, the girl cheerleaders are prone to injuries much more than the guys on the football field. Uh, well, no, it doesn't uh, say that. they do say that. That is something that top ten top ten list dot org. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're caught in the 1990s. Uh, spinal injuries are big and, and broken legs. I mean, you know, you break yeah. a femur. That's uh, that's no for like the tops, whatever they like a, the flyers. Yeah, the flyers, <laughs> the tops, the, flyers. The, bottom, the power tops. <laughs> um, number seven, <clears throat> number seven, we got uh, motorcycle racing. Uh, the sense. Isle of Man TT event is oh, the most yeah. dangerous motor race sport in the world, which has cost over 250, yeah. uh, 220 casualties. Wow, dude, MotoGP is crazy. Guys, I know what number one is. You don't. Yeah, I do. Uh, Cycling. Uh, no, it ain't. No. Uh, uh, we got yeah. fishing, number six. What? Uh, angling, dumb. believe it or not, is also one of the most dangerous sports today because of the associated risks with drowning. Oh, come Rock on. fishing is especially dangerous. It involves casting a line into the ocean from the shoreline. And many people end up losing their lives when they are pulled under by large waves. What? St- no, what? Way. no way. Statistically? <laughs> it yep. can't be statistically the fifth most dangerous. Top 10 list.org. <laughs> uh, number five, rock climbing. That yeah, would make sense. That makes sense. Uh, in the year 2000 alone, there were 24 deaths in the U.S. due to rock climbing mishaps. Um, you, you should not only climb to the target summit, but also have the stamina to get back to the starting point, which makes the sport all the more dangerous. Yeah. I Number four, that. this one makes a lot of sense to me. Bullfighting. Yeah. That, that also referred to yeah. as tarakami. See, I'm interested. I'm wondering if it's like, okay, are, are they, are these sports producing the most injuries Dude, or are they just no, going, no, no, when no, you no, do no. get hurt, no, you no. fucking die. Yeah. Here's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Don't think about it. That's okay. not what top 10 list is all about. <laughs> it's just content for the podcast. Okay. And none of this is 
Uh, Accurate. <laughs> okay. Okay, because number one is going to surprise you. Okay? <laughs> so both find number so, four. Here we so go. Number, I number, number three, I, Brian, you nailed it. Okay. Horse racing. You nope. got the no, horse I stuff. Horse I mean, you said. Said, you said fucking polo. It's the same thing. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Riding a horse. Yeah, riding yeah, a horse. Yeah. The sport has also witnessed several fatalities in the U.S. It was a whopping 128 and encompassed all aspects such as racing or show jumping or polo. Yeah, that sounds totally... Um, yeah, I mean, you're on a fucking That makes horse. a lot of sense. Polo's yeah. hardcore. Horses, bad. horses are yeah. scary. Number two, Brian, you also called it base jumping. Base jumping. Now, base jumping is number two, okay? Just remember this. <laughs> Base jumping can also be a very, very dangerous sport to take up. You will be fine if your parachute opens, but otherwise you are fucked. Yeah. I need one more guess at number one. Sure. Synchronized swimming. Ooh, no. Fuck. Here's a, here's a clue. You guys, I'll give you guys a clue. Maybe okay. you'll get it. We partook in this sport. Lawn bowling. Lawn bowling, baby. No. Oh, I know why. Lawn bowling because is there's a so risky many old people. and dangerous game, and there are several deaths reported, even as far as the sport is concerned. The sport literally kills thousands worldwide. Broken hips, dislocated ankles, torn knees, heart attacks occur <laughs> owing to the stressful nature of the game. Does no, it say it that say on that. the write-up? That is verbatim what it says. Oh, my God, dude. This fucking site needs to be shut down. <laughs> <laughs> this site is going to be providing us content for months now. It's great. I'm sure there's lots of No fucking... mention that the average age of the participant is 87. Is fucking 120. Just because, just because I need a little bit more Holy dopamine shit. from this website, can like I assume that this is the type of website that has like, check out some of our other lists. Well, yeah. Do you want to do you want to know? Just it? Give us some headlines. Like, you want some, some more lists? It, wait, yeah. hold on, Jer. Is this the is this the type of site <laughs> that you go to? Oh, you gotta you gotta you, you gotta, gotta click through to every one, and it shows you. Actually, at, actually, no. You know what I mean? No, there there that wasn't a part of it. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of ads. You got <laughs> a, lot a, of, a, lot a lot of a lot of ads. Uh, top dash ten dash list dot org. Okay, so <laughs> that's annoying. But I mean, hey, they've they've got like miscellaneous education, people, entertainment, travel, health, business, technology, sports. Um, guys, I'm going to be using this site a lot over the next couple of weeks. <laughs> the to- the 12 most venous- venomous insects in the world. Wait, 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 wait. How many? Top 12. But I know, that can't I know. be. Well, hey, the dollar store. You go to the dollar store. There's things for five bucks in there. <laughs> That's right. Uh, 10 war movies I that are a must that. watch. That's a good one. That sounds good. Uh, 10 things mothers selflessly do for their children. That's uh, I bet you that one's a very... That's steeped in, in science. <laughs> uh, how right, to make right, your right. nose look smaller. Ten simple tips. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, wait. You have to click on that one. Now that you read it, just give us a couple of This is examples. just somebody oh, reading Cosmo. And this is just, yeah. I mean, it like, down on a website. I mean, there's a lot here. I mean, you know, they're putting shit up every day. Uh, ten shadowy biblical characters no one can explain. That is so vague. Yep. But ten outdated <laughs> medical treatments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's go to this one. Ten out- outdated medical treatments. All right. So here's the, list. here's the list. Which yeah, actually aren't lobotomies. that outdated. And, and you know, these, sure ones, on these ones I'm, I'm sure are pretty, pretty bang on. Number, uh, number, let's go to number 10. We'll start at number 10. Uh, number 10, uh, ECT. Actually, not outdated. ECT is still in use today and still very effective. Uh, number nine, probably different. They just do it differently. What is ECT? Electro, electro, uh, electroshock therapy. Okay. Number nine, insulin therapy. Eh, here's another method of treating schizophrenics. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so they <laughs> just, so they were just pumping schizophrenics full of insulin. Uh induced seizures. That sounds a little a little aggressive. Uh-huh. Uh, number 7, uh bloodletting. Number which we've learned six, has its function. fire cupping, which actually Brian got some fire cupping done this week. So Did, yeah, it's actually that, great. So fire waste, wait, cupping? wasted your fucking time. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So no, why does it say cupping? Uh, fire cupping and cupping is the same thing. Oh, there. Yeah. yeah. But uh, cupping, depending. cupping ori- I mean original cupping was glass cups that they would light fire in and then put it on you and the fire the heat would be the thing that sucked it up now it's suction through yeah, yeah, yeah. like um ah, ah, like a like okay a, like yeah yeah like a, yeah yeah like a uh suction thing like a, yeah like a penis pump, penis pump. Yeah. i get a i get fire cupping and uh acupuncture done at the the chinese herbal medicine clinic and it's really great wait do you go to i stop pain no, it's a oh. it's a school because it's oh, my yeah. friends in school. There. I want to go to I stop pain. Yeah, uh, treatment using mercury. That sounds like probably not good. Definitely um, trepanation, which we talked about. Mm-hmm. Number three, uh, electrical impotence technique. <laughs> what the fuck? Impotence of men was a major problem even in the ancient world back then. An impotent man was considered so socially weak. <laughs> and was sidelined. <laughs> An impotent man literally meant embarrassment for the person back then. 
However, uh, with the invention of electricity, the world in every aspect glowed bright, literally. By the early 19th century, when the properties and uses of electricity was known to man, the researchers and doctors were eager to test its effects on the human body. They soon came up with the idea that electri- electrifying certain regions of the body would redeem its activity. So they're just shocking dudes' cocks. They're just trying to turn the power back on. Mm-hmm. Um, maggot debridement oh, therapy. Oh, fuck me, dude. Don't, Ooh. dude, anything to do with maggots. Ooh. Maggots need to be eradicated. And then number one was cocaine <laughs> to the rescue. Uh, we got cocaine being just used for fucking everything back then. Yeah. I mean, we still use derivatives <laughs> of cocaine for numbing agents and stuff. Yep. Let's move on. Here's a crazy story. To um, another top 10 list. <laughs> I mean, I got more. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, don't worry. I'll give you another one next week. Okay, great. Inmate who is pregnant settles suit over stop at Starbucks en route to a hospital. This is so... This is horrific. This is so ethically and morally disturbing. Yeah. What? Sandra Quinones, six months pregnant, Quiznos. was... At, uh, was... was Sorry. Sandra Quiznos. That's in, insensitive. <laughs> uh, for a second there, I was like, is it Quiznos? <laughs> Um, six months pregnant, uh, she was at a jail in Orange County, California, uh, when her water broke in March of 2016, according to the court records. She pushed the call button in her cell uh, for two hours without a response. And when county employees finally did take her to a hospital, they stopped at a Starbucks along the way, her lawyer said in a federal lawsuit. She lost the pregnancy, according to the records. Oh, dude, that's fucking crazy. So on Tuesday, the Orange County Board of Supervisors voted unanimously in a closed session to pay Miss, Mrs. Uh, Quinones $480,000 to settle a civil rights lawsuit that she had filed in federal court that claimed denial of medical care, negligent treatment, and other violations. Does that sound like nothing to you yeah. for this it really, horrific? I was thinking it really that, does seem like uh, seem like just fucking pennies here. That was my first thought, yeah. was that Fuck. that doesn't seem like enough. Uh, Orange County Sheriff's Department spokesperson declined to comment about the lawsuit or the settlement. Phone and email messages left for the board chairman and a lawyer representing the county were not immediately returned. Uh, this is from the New York Times. When she went into labor, Mr. Mrs. Quinones uh, was in the middle of serving a 70 day jail, uh, 70 days in jail after she was arrested uh, for possession of a controlled substance and possession of a controlled substance for sales, according to the sheriff's department. The county had requested that the federal lawsuit be thrown out, arguing that the statute of limitations had passed. A district court judge agreed and the case was dismissed in 2020 of October. But the appeals court reversed that decision in December and sent the case back to the lower court. Um, a lawyer for Ms. Quinones, Richard P. Herman, wrote in the lawsuit, which was filed in April 2020 and later amended, that the unnamed county employees had decided not to call an ambulance. Instead, he said, they took Ms. Quinones, then 28, to the hospital on a non-emergency basis. While the employees stopped at a Starbucks, Mrs. Quinones was in the back of the van, bleeding and in labor, the lawsuit said. The suit did not say how long the stop at the Starbucks lasted. But I mean, you know, you've been to a Starbucks before. If it's busy, you're in there for at least fucking 10, 15 minutes. Dude, the wait is inconsistent. Like the, f- the decision, fact that they stopped the decision in park to yeah. go this person's life yep. and the life that is inside this person is so meaningless to us that we're going to stop to yeah. get coffee yeah. on the way to the hospital. Yeah. So yeah, she's been through she's been through a lot. She's obviously uh she's she, I mean in the in in the um in the lawsuit uh she came out to say that she's obviously uh suffering from severe and extreme post traumatic stress disorder and depression mm-hmm. as a result of the episode. Um and uh according to court documents has been homeless since the episode, uh alternating between living on the street and in a, in county custody. Um her homelessness stems from her inability to function and take care of her affairs after the incident as a result of the severe emotional harm in com- combination with her mental impairments, said Mr. Herman, uh, who said in the lawsuit. So, Can you imagine? I mean, like incarceration is, I mean, like the, 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 the ability for jail time to be in any way rehabilitative is nothing is nil Mm -hmm. yeah and much more likely to make you far worse off as a human once you are like like it's a it's actually and and like definitely in this case it's actually it's actually kind of crazy that you're allowed to go to jail and go back into 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 life because Mm -hmm. it's so bad for you Mm -hmm. 
like jail is so bad for yeah, you yeah. as a person. Yeah. So, and I, I don't mean that people don't deserve to be free. I just mean that like it, jail will fuck your shit up. Yeah. Way worse than it was before you went in. It's just in most, in a lot of cases for people who they're planning on trying to rehabilitate back into society where they've done something that like, you know, it's like has like deserves some sort of like Ooh. repercussions, but also is not worth like giving up on a human being for it just doesn't make sense. But j- like jail, like, jail is a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? It, yeah. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it takes somebody who might have, might have done something that is criminal and illegal and they deserve, a, they deserve a punishment and then obviously there's a whole bunch of people that are either wrongly convicted or, yeah. you know, you know, a lot of things that we now have come to deem as like non-criminal, like mm-hmm. being in possession of weed or something like I that. I mean, right here, like yeah. possession of fucking possession of, dru- substance. Possession like, of drugs. That, like the whole notion. You know, like, why are you so putting this person in jail dumb. for that? Yeah. And so like you get these people and then you put them in jail and then you make it more likely to them yeah. to return to jail by putting them in jail and yeah. then releasing them. They're much more likely to return to jail. It's like, it's like, it's, it's hard for an alcoholic to recover. Like yeah. a lot of alcoholics, they relapse. What was that show? That fucking awesome show on HBO? The Night Of. The Night Of. Dude, yeah. That, wonderful show. To that like. will fucking tune you into yeah. what it's like to go to jail. Yeah. So uh, anyway, really fucked up story. Um, and so and, imagine that, just the fucking how jail is. Yeah. And then having something like this happen. Mm. And it's just, it's like, it's one of the most like offensive, dis, yeah. just, just, uh, of examples of dis a, a total disregard for human yeah. life. It's fucking gross. Yeah. And like, like, you know, we know people who we know people who work in the, in the prison system and the jail system here. Like I know a couple of sheriffs, my sister used to be a sheriff and mm-hmm. sheriffs in Canada are different from the U S sheriffs in Canada are correctional officers in the, um, uh, well in the court, but, but you know, um, in jails. So, so correctional officers. And, and the, um, and if, you know, if any correctional officers are listening to the podcast, which I'm sure there's a few, um, don't be like that. Don't do nope. that. You know, Look like that. be, be a good I human. Mean, it's not like, about, it's not about the job or the role. It's the type of human being who, yes. who, who looks at another human being and does not appreciate that person as, a, yeah. as an equal to them. Like looks at that person as yeah. less than, but you know what? Society. No, I, but I, I would, I would push back on that a little bit and say that I am sure that, that there is an ingrained culture within the job that that oh yeah that sort of pushes people to a certain point about how and 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 i think it's like i think it's just part of the job because Mm -hmm. of the the situation you find yourself in Mm -hmm. that you there's like almost this this like inability to see a prisoner as an equal Mm -hmm. because of you know whatever to, to keep yourself safe to to maintain some sort of like um, authority, you know, yada, yada, whatever. But like, and okay, sure. I can see that being a thing and I can see that being valuable. But again, you have to be able to have a, have a filter mm-hmm. to be able to like know the difference between right and wrong. And like, you know, seeing someone as a human. Yeah. Like oh, oh, above all else, like that should come first and foremost. And like in this case here, the, she yeah. was fucking sitting in there for two hours it's fucking before crazy. anyone came to, to like even check up. It's like, come on, man, <clears throat> that shit's like, that's just, just that's, that also, that's just bad. You're just bad at your job. I, I believe that that probably is amplified <clears throat> by the like, like situations like the privatized prison system in the United States too, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah perhaps. Yeah. 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 And in terms of the cultural thing, like it's not, it's not, it's not that unlike the way that, you know, we talk a lot about, um, nurses, doctors, healthcare professionals across the spectrum, you know, they work in like super high stress, ultra time demanding, uh, uh, work environments where they are like all, almost all of them are on the verge of burnout. And that causes like a, that can cause easily over time, a jaded perspective on like what Mm -hmm. you do and the people you take care of. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm sure that's happening. I'm sure that happens. I'm sure it happens in that, in that scenario, in that Mm -hmm. environment. Uh, let's, uh, let's cleanse the palate here with a little bit of, uh, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Huh? So, uh, this is uh, tiny Pat hat bringing us this content, mm-hmm. which, uh, Love is that. also producer of the week. You and Stina, congratulations. Uh, 
pearl necklaces. The people getting Sheena jewelry Moore. made from semen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was, I I thought you were talking about those type of pearl necklaces. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. That's no, what I thought. Yeah, legit. Uh, jeweler and sculptor Amanda Bo- uh, Booth opened a package of bottled semen first thing in the morning. It was a mistake she'd only make once. <laughs> Quote, fresh samples are one thing, but when they've been in the mail for like a little bit, I mean, it smells like semen. You know what I mean? Booth said. <laughs> That's <laughs> such a great quote. Clients commission jizzy jewelry, her term, and send uh, samples of cum to her workshop to be dehydrated, powdered, and incorporated into wearable clay beads or trinkets. She says, quote, we process them at the end of the day. Otherwise, we're sitting in the smell all day. And it's just, we did it in the morning one day. And I was just like, no, I'm never doing that again. (laughs) You know, it's so funny. By the way that you're reading this, and maybe that is the tone that this is. (laughs) No, it's got to be the tone. (laughs) It sounds like this person got into a job that they, like, hate. (laughs) They're like, I can't believe. So wait, this person does this exclusively? Uh, I mean, they're doing a lot. Yeah, (laughs) Booth started her jewelry business back in 2021 and makes wearable sculptures and trinkets out of people's bodily fluids and ashes. Breast milk, uh, cremated remains of loved ones or pets, fur, uh, locks of hair. Dude, expensive business. Kyla, um, somebody told Kyla about this uh, this service that they had in the US. And then she found like a, a Canadian equivalent company that does it. Where, donating breast milk? Where you take your breast milk. Not donating. We, we've, we actually donated a fuckload of bre- breast milk a couple weeks ago because we had a shit ton of frozen stuff. But we... Um, there's this oh. com- there's companies that do it. I know it's you put, you, put the, it. you put it you put it in a uh, a mason jar and then fart in the mason jar and then send it to a dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude have you heard of this company? <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. sick. Make ba- you make bank. bank. <laughs> but it's expensive. You you send it you send your breast milk away, they dehydrate it, powder it, and then they make it into baby formula so that you don't oh. so that you can oh. just for make you or for, for others you, who for, need it. Well well I'm, oh, I'm sure you could then donate it, but right. but it's for it would be it for comes you. Back to you. So if you were oh, like, if you uh, were like, I have cool. a bunch of frozen milk, I don't know what to do with it. I don't. I want to stop breastfeeding. I want to. I don't want to give my. You might not want to give your baby formula for whatever reason. Yeah. Then you can make formula out of your own breast milk, and then, mm. uh, but mm, mega expensive. Yeah, would, right. Do they you should take that frozen milk. Let it be a little like less if you're frozen, a, and then just. Use it as ice cream. It was like 30 <laughs> feeds or something like that, which is very few when you have a fucking baby that eats eight times a day. Uh, yeah. Like 600 bucks. Wow. No. Like 30 oh, feeds. Wow, wow, wow. Something, Wait, but something like that. Yeah. Do, like, do they just put it in like a dehydrator? Well, and then, like, I don't know what the process is. I, I don't know. I mean, how hard? Yeah, why don't you dehydrate yourself? Just like toss it in the cupboard for a few months. Yeah. So it's not a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. Try well, um, after after someone cre- uh, commented on one of her TikTok videos asking her if she'd ever considered incorporating um, man juices, uh, both made a uh, half-joking Facebook post about jizzy jewelry and started receiving actual serious orders for it. She tested the process with her husband, uh, Jesse Mullen, first to figure out how much cum would be needed to work into a sculpture. What's the site? Where's this? What's the site? This is Vice. I also okay, want to know. That makes sense. I want to know who the husband is. Like, like what is like? Is he a school teacher? And like, has he just been? He's a sen- He's a U.S. senator. Has he just been referenced. <laughs> in he's this a U.S. Article? senator. And actually, the funny thing was, uh, he he made his donation to uh, her cause on a Zoom call. Wow. <laughs> um, and now he's he got canceled. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so she said you need at least a teaspoon, uh, of liquid makes for the right clay to come ratio. She determined, uh, but teaspoon? more is better, but more is better. More is better than a teaspoon, but at least, um, and whether it's nothing, the, I mean, I guess everyone's different and also whether the polymer clay would hold up, uh, to oven baking. She had to figure that out. So it turned out fantastic. She said she posted a TikTok about making her first jizzy piece. Last I mean, month. it's such a sticky material. And that video, well, it depends. Uh, and that video went viral. <laughs> uh, people have been blowing up her DMs ever since. So uh, for a lot of Booth's customers, it's a kink thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Interesting. <laughs> weird. You don't say. Didn't see that coming. Uh, one of Booth's clients who asked for remain, to remain anonymous told me that she and her long-term partner are loosely part of the BDSM community and have bracelets that act as collars or pieces of jewelry that typically symbolize a consensually possessive relationship after researching further into the jizzy jewelry shop we both thought it would be the ultimate you are mine type caller Uh, it would be our little secret and inside joke 
Uh, Epsi, another client, told me that she and her husband commissioned a simple pearl pendant because they wanted something that symbolizes the dominant and submissive aspect of the relationship. Collecting the sample was the trickiest part, she said. We ended up opting to have my husband use a condom and then cut the end of the condom to deposit the sample in a specimen tube. Dude, uh, that's we a then hack. sealed the tube, or sorry, we then sealed the tube. <laughs> I then stole the tube and drank it. <laughs> 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 Sorry, we, we, sorry. Jared just got Jared just got, Jared just went off on a little fucking fantasy there for a second. Uh, we then sealed the tube with electrical tape around the cap and vacuum sealed it before placing it into a padded envelope. Uh, locked the padded envelope into a. <laughs> that was very, that was it. Uh, my, my partner loves to say things like, "You're going to be wearing my nut on your finger," uh, and and <laughs> they're in your DMs, but that's uh, that's my nut. They're in your DMs, but that's my nut on her hand. Um, that's cute. It's a cute couple. Uh, <laughs> several of Booth's clients I spoke to said they ordered jizzery jewelry as gifts. <laughs> Guys, I'm, is, I'm on one today. This is fucking, I'm fucking insane. On one today. Did you, did, <coughs> I feel like, Jerry, I feel like you'd be interested in, would you be a client? I, I think like it'd you, be pretty funny. I, like I think it'd be it pretty done. fucking funny to get like to yeah. I mean like I bet I, it's expensive. Dude, I would never go. I would never go. Surprise, baby! Like I yeah, got you a yeah, fucking yeah. necklace. It's my jizz. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I, I think I would do it like as a novelty kind of like. How funny would it be if yeah, we yeah, made yeah. rings with my jizz in it? Um, Yours but I would get work. one for you, myself. You'd need I, a donation. I would wear my own. You know, you'd need like a, you'd need to like mix mine with yours. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would get one of all three of ours and I would get it turned into a toe ring. That's kind of cute. Cute. Actually. If we all did like a triple sample. What What if we did it and then we dyed them like black? And we made these cool like skull. Dyed the jizz black or the, or the pearls black? Like hey, the, the polymer clay. Like what if we like did it? it what if we did it for like an Instagram giveaway contest and we gave our sperm ring to someone who, uh, I don't know, subscribed to Honestly, the if, podcast? That's if, an interesting. If, if uh, you're listening and you're interested in this, just DM us. Just write me. Just, <laughs> just say me. Yeah. Like if, you, if you're in, say Yeah, me. if you write us and you just say me, then we know what you mean. Holy fuck. <laughs> You know what's really funny is uh, I met a young I, I met a young woman at the uh, at Laurier after my talk. She came up to me and she was like, "Hi, I'm a massive fan." And I was like, "Oh, cool." And she was like, "I literally no, like I literally am a massive fan." I was like, "Oh, thank you." And she goes, "I fucking hate cats." And I was like, "Yeah, dude, you are a fucking big you are fan. a massive fan. Yeah. That's fantastic." Um, okay, so anyway. Um, uh, <laughs> Jizzy Jewelry. Jizzy Jewelry. Kurt Duran <laughs> told me that his wife Stacy saw Booth's shop on TikTok and sent it to him. Uh, with a vasectomy scheduled soon, he asked her if she wanted one of these pieces with his swimmers in it. Another man facing an, an imminent vasectomy had a similar idea in 2009 and commissioned a ring with his sperm inside for his wife from a freelance gig finder website. Stacy said, Stacy, the wife said yes, and he placed an order for a ring as a gift for her birthday. That's kind of that's see like that, that's kind of cute. It's that like, is like I'm gonna I'm gonna have this vasectomy. I'm not gonna be there's like my sperm are gonna be trapped forever. Uh -huh. So why don't we just take a bunch of them, kill them, put them in a little fucking yeah. like but make them the mosquito in the amber in in yes. Jurassic Park. Yes. Do you do you think that you could be pro life and wear jizzy jewelry? Wow, good question. This is a. You think these are ideas are at all? I'm gonna say no. Yeah, I'm gonna say okay. no. Nah. You don't think you. Well, fuck, I don't know. I mean, I feel like there's a spectrum to pro-life. You know what I mean? I feel, I don't yeah. think everyone's going that far back. <laughs> Some people are, for sure. I guess it also depends on if you're married or not, too, right? Like, if well, you're not married yet, then, like, maybe you shouldn't be, like... I think it really depends on the like, clothing you're wearing while you're preaching like pro-life. Like, if it's pure linen right. or... Right. Like, yeah, like, if you're looking like a fucking, like, a dude who's still riding horse and buggy... <laughs> You ain't doing this. You know, you're not fucking doing See, this. Yeah, because you're not allowed to use the internet. You're probably not on the that's gram. Right. That's right. You don't know what TikTok is. Yeah, you don't you don't have the you don't have the tools to access Jizzy Jewelry. Well, and also because it's Satan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's that. There's I mean, that. it could be enough to make someone convert though. Jizzy jewelry? Yeah. To be like, I'll 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 give all this up for that. Yeah, like give up God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, maybe. How much does it cost, Jizzy Jewelry? Does it uh, say? I believe a ring is uh, $13,000 US. No, Are you... I, no, I have no idea. Okay. Uh, Jenna Shad... 
Jenna Schatzman. <laughs> dude, that's a tough. Dude, that's a tough name. Schatzman. That's a tough. <laughs> that's a tough one. You definitely don't. Oh, you change your name. <laughs> you definitely don't want that one. <laughs> Jenna Schatzman. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck, that's a name. <laughs> Jenna Schatzman said she curr- she's currently pregnant with her partner, um, and her partner is always down for anything. So when she suggested turning his semen into a ring, he said, yeah. Uh, he was immediately intrigued and thought it would be such a fun way to have something I could wear that's almost a reminder of our love and sex life before the baby came, and also to remind us of what got us here in the first place, she told me in an email. Uh Quote, my partner loves to say things like, you're going to be wearing my nut on your finger and uh, they're in your DMs, Wait. but that's my nut on your hand. Wait, so that's on. where that quote came from. Oh, from I, him. Was like, I was like, yeah. whoa, did two people say yeah. the exact same yeah. thing? Yeah. You know, that this <laughs> article just goes on and on and yeah. on. With just different examples? It's just what's, so much calm, dude. What's, um, so that it's was number, so much calm. So that was number 10. What's the number ninth way to honor your loved one? <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. Fuck. Um, yeah. So anyway, folks, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, that was insanity. Um, tickets are on sale. Come to our live show. Vancouver, September 21st. Edmonton, just a little bit before that, September 19th. Calgary. Uh, <laughs> information on tickets is going to be coming out soon. That's September 24th. We can't wait to come out there. It's going to be so fucking fun. Uh, we got some really solid guests lined up and uh, it's going to be a hoot. Um, and also what is a hoot is our discord popping off such a hooty time. Um, so much so that <clears throat> fucking half the content we brought to you today was brought to you from all the folks over on our discord and, uh, and including our patrons. So, uh, you can see the, uh, links to all that tickets and discord all in the show notes of this episode and the episodes before it. Guys, I am hooting and y'all out there listening are hollering at letters at sickboypodcast.com if you want to tell like us that. That was wow. good. about wow. how down you are for our personal jizzy jewelry collection. Don't even email us. Just slide into the DMs. Just me. Just slide me. in there. Me. Me. And if you want to be a guest on the show, not to talk about jizzy jewelry, but to talk about something a little bit more serious, but with laughs. But if you're listening and you bought some of this jizzy ass jewelry, fucking call us up. We'll have you on a feel good Friday. We'll do it. That's actually very true. Uh, (laughs) Sickboypodcast.com slash contact. Fill out the guest form. Maybe you'll be a guest on our show. Um, And, uh, and honestly, I just want to reiterate if you, if you are in Calgary, Vancouver or Edmonton, um, definitely come out to the live shows because there's at least four things we had to cut from today's episode. And uh, and you'll get to see those things happen in real life um, if you're there in person. So a uh, huge thank you to the people who keep uh, this podcast online. Um, Jeff Lonis, our manager, we love you very much. To Rich O'Coin, thank you so much for the theme music. And uh, to Mrs. Schatzman, I <laughs> would not have laughed at your name at all if it wasn't for Taylor and Jeremy. But like, it's You wouldn't like, have batted an eye I'm at not Schatzman? Even once. It's like Lower Sackville. I never would have thought of it until somebody was like, really? that is like a Well, I'll tell you right balls. now. When you read it, you go, her name is Shitman. <laughs> Her name is Guy Shat himself. <laughs> yeah, like, that's yeah. kind of what it looks like. Yeah, Shatsman. Does, yeah. yeah, I did think that was really funny though. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for this week. <laughs> I'm Brian. I'm Taylor. <laughs> I'm Jeremy. This is a sick boy.